Welcome to Living Legacy Leadership, where we'll explore, discover, and share insights, tools, and strategies for a life well-lived into elderhood. I'm your host, Donna Kim Brand, author, speaker, legacy strategy coach, and creator of the concept Living Legacy, where you choose to live life on your own terms while contributing to people, places, and projects along your life journey. I believe that the life you live is the legacy you leave. Now, the guests I bring to you each week all address some unique aspect of learning, leadership, or legacy. This helps you raise your own game as a leader in business and life, and also showcases some extraordinary people who exemplify living legacy leadership. At least once a month, I also offer a training session to skill you in game changer thinking for your own application. So get your notebook ready or sharpen your memory by tuning in your attention, and we'll dive right in. Now, before I get going, um, I just want to mention that last phrase I use, get your notebook ready or sharpen your memory by tuning in your attention, um, is actually pretty key. In terms of ease of remembering things, the real key is to pay attention. And so often um, we spend our time sort of slip sliding through our days, sitting in the car, sort of listening to something in it with a half of an ear and um, thinking about something else with the other half of our attention, maybe dealing with rambunctious kids or grandkids in the back seat or a pet. And same thing with um, even if you pull up a, a podcast or a radio show, like I hope you're doing with Living Legacy Leadership and other of the SOB radio network shows, that you actually give it your attention because attention is the real key to, and the first step to having a good memory. The thing about having a good memory is it incorporates all aspects of time. If you pay attention in the moment, like right now, then you make the moment of now come alive now, which turns into a much more viable, colorful, um, three-dimensional, four-dimensional memory in your eventual past. And it then gives you a much bigger pool of information, ideas, exposure, thoughts to pull forward into your future in most creative ways. So it's really, I kind of use the infinity loop with the present moment, the now at the crossover point. And to the left, that circle of the infinity loop is your memories that you hold about things that have happened in your past. And then you move to the right and create that loop, which is a future that hasn't happened yet, but you pull the memories from the past into the future to create the kind of future you want to have. So it does all have a reason for my saying that. Now, last week, we actually began a series um, called Mad About Making a Difference, 31 Ways to Impact Others. And as I mentioned, um, while I often have plenty of ideas of my own, I also appreciate and call upon the ideas of others who've already done the hard work to lay out a lot of ideas. And so we are continuing with some real insight from the Oprah Winfrey magazine. It's called O, O Magazine, and um, it's from the March 2020 issue. So if you want to go look it up, um, you're welcome to do that. But I do verbally try to repeat all of the different uh, organizations and websites so you can capture them in that notebook um, because writing things down does also help you um, hold on to memories better. You're using different senses. You're using the sense of touch. You're using the sense of vision, not just your hearing sense. And so when you use multiple senses, um, it's called synesthesia. And again, that elevates your chance of remembering what you've heard. Anyway, so just to continue um, this week about ideas that will make a difference and impact others. One that we're continuing with here is to write a note. So if you haven't had a pen pal since middle school, but you remember the thrill of opening each letter, bust out your ballpoint and make the world a less lonely place. You can correspond with a member of the military deployed overseas through soldiers, angels. You could write to an immigrant awaiting processing in a detention facility through Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Service, or even send a card to a pediatric cancer patient through the Tyler Robinson Foundation. 
You may also be aware of other people and organizations. You can um, reach people who would just be so touched and inspired um, by hearing from you through obviously uh, churches, civic organizations in your local area, friends even. Um, and sometimes we don't have to look too far. Uh, it doesn't even have to be someone you don't know. You could send a letter to someone in your family that you haven't communicated with in that way for a while and just watch the difference it makes in the interaction. Okay, now number 11 here from continuing from last week, stop junk mail before it starts. How do you do that? Well, we wanna save trees, time, and your mail carriers back by visiting this website. It's called optoutprescreen.com. Opt Sorry, optoutprescreen, O-P-T-O-U-T, prescreen, P-R-E-S-C-R-E-E-N.com. Now that's where the Fair Credit Reporting Act empowers you to refuse credit card insurance mailings for five years or forever. So if those are just a few of the things you keep getting inundated with, that'll, that'll nip that in the bud right there. Okay, number 12, share your passion. Now, Asian author, um, as an author, uh, this writer believes in buying new books, but the co-inhabitant of our 400 square foot duplex, her husband, believes her hardcover habit creates an obstacle, <laughs> a whole obstacle course in fact, and fire hazard that could land on them uh, or the TV show called Hoarders, oh dear. Um, when the stacks of books rising from the floors make, make it feel like the walls are closing in, she loads up her backpack, hops on her bike and heads from one little free library in her neighborhood to the next. Um, dumping a bin at Goodwill will be more efficient but a lot less fun. Um, she imagines each book is a gift to her neighbors and tries to tailor the present of the book to their tastes. She leaves her hippie reads, volumes on magic and advanced vegetarian cooking she failed to master, um, at the little free library outside the basic co-op natural grocery store, um, where she once spotted a, a shopper nabbing her old cookbook. And they got talking, and she gave me a great recipe for sauteed beets. Oh, isn't that sweet? Okay. So the point is, um, I did this. I've been downsizing, getting ready to sell my home, and a little problem arose with my hundreds of books in multiple boxes. The libraries didn't want them. The schools didn't want them. Um, even the thrift stores and consignment shops didn't want them. I was ready to donate everything. And the, the scuttlebutt was they said, Young people use devices. They don't read hardcover, softcover books in their hand anymore on the whole. Middle-aged adults in their 30s and 40s are too busy to read. And elders, people, and I, I'm saying elders, and I don't mean that people in their 50s are elderly, but, you know, people where your eyes start to change um, need large print. <laughs> and so I had a really hard time to donate my boxes of books. In the end, Goodwill took them, but I think they passed most of them on, especially because they were nonfiction, not fiction. But, um, you know, there's a thing, who, who, who'd have thunk it, right? After years and years of collecting and how, how meaningful and valuable they were to me, I could hardly give them away. Just be aware of that. So you might want to check before you schlep them all over town like this lady did in her backpack. Okie dokie, here's another way to make an impact. Be a dog's best friend, at least until they meet their forever human. You could foster uh, through or rescue organizations to help an keep animals out of high kill shelters by finding them temporary homes until they're adopted. Muddy Paws Rescue in New York City organizes volunteers to not only foster pups, but also take them to the vet and stage adoption events. There's also the Lucky Dog Animal Rescue, which does the same for canines and cats in the Washington DC area. And in the Twin Cities, I presume that's Minneapolis St. Paul, volunteers as young as 12 can help host a puppy party for pet seekers and dog lovers through secondhand hounds. 
If you're ready for a longer relationship, volunteer peppy, pu puppy raisers, bring up dogs till they're old enough to be trained as service animals for people who are visually impaired. The Guide Dog Foundation has programs in 11 states. Wow, that's pretty cool if you're into the animals. Wonderful. Okay, here's another one, and it's a simple one and sometimes also so difficult. It is just listen. Be the loving adult a kid in crisis needs. The Trevor Project, T-R-E-V-O-R -E Project, trains volunteers to answer texts and chat messages from LGBTQ youth struggling with issues ranging from coming out to depression to suicidal thoughts. In New York City and Los Angeles, staffers answer calls 24-7. And advocacy volunteers address the problems from a legal standpoint. For instance, searching laws and filing briefs to help protect young people from conversion therapy. Okay, so uh, I think people involved in this whole issue know what some of that language means. 15, spare a quarter. Apps like Give Tide and Change Up Round your credit or debit card purchases to the next dollar, then donate the extra cents to your chosen charity. You can input a weekly cap at and also submit your offerings as tax deductions. Well, that's pretty cool. I know there are some other apps too that um, you can round up purchases that goes into an investment fund and uh, fills your retirement fund. You know, a quarter by a quarter, a quarter, and uh, that that you know about compounding interest. That's how how you build it up. Okay, here's another. Enjoy VIP status. Now, VIP status in this case stands for Volunteers in Parks, and that's what the National Park Service calls the almost 250,000 folks who pitch in at our 419 national parks and monuments each year. At volunteer.gov, you'll find opportunities to use your skills to do things like remove non-native plant species from Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, which allows local flora to grow. Or maybe you can demonstrate hand quilting at the Homestead National Monument of America in Nebraska. Or translate and transcribe recordings of immigrants who arrived in the U.S. from the 1890s to the 1930s for the Ellis Island discography project at the Statue of Liberty National Monument. Actually, there are quite a few cool things about the National Park Service. Um, so I would look into that for sure, not only for volunteer opportunities, but also for visiting and even possible retirement opportunities, um, a living and moving between national parks as an inexpensive way to live um, once you decide you're, you, you can be mobile and um, you want to you want to be on the move for a little while. Okie dokie. Now, number 17, it says throw a boom, boomerang. So metaphorically speaking, that is, it turns out that volunteering just uh, doesn't just have a positive ripple effect on others. It also come back, comes back to benefit you. Researchers at the London School of Economics. Hey, that's in London. I've taught there um, found that people who volunteer weekly are 16% happier than those who don't. A study published in the Psychological Science magazine reported that those who spend time helping others end up feeling more capable, more confident, and more useful. Well, that makes sense, doesn't it? Um, and as if they have more time uh, rather than less, even though they've got the same that they would have had before. It's a perception thing. Another study in the Journal of Ep Epidemiology and Community Health showed that adults age 50 plus who give back live longer than those who don't. So to find an opportunity that could be your mood lifter slash fountain of youth, visit nationalservice.gov. I also recommend Encore.org, E-N-C-O-R-E.org. Wonderful organization. I know Mark Friedman, the founder. Okay, number 18, get looped in. In nine states and Washington, D.C., you can save time, money, and the planet by joining Loop, L-O-O-P, which is a cutting-edge service that delivers your staples from cold brew to shampoo in reusable containers in a Loop tote bag at your door. So when you've used what's inside, place the empties in the to tote, schedule a UPS pickup, and Loop will take back the containers and drop off refills. I think uh, millennials in some of these cities um, are so used to now having things delivered.